Page 8, Fandango. At the top of the page they tell you Fandango is a dance, a type of dance. And the key word is dance. Keep that in mind. They give you chord progressions based on either you can read all about it. That's wonderful. Just three, four time, let's just talk about a few little things going on here. Both hands, now again, I, when I start learning a piece, I play it all connected. So it's here. You have an E chord at the beginning of this. And it's very important that you don't hold this left hand down. Hmm? So forth. You see the ending there? It doesn't have any number. This is tricky. You have to read very carefully what they're doing. If there's a note there to the next strain, there's a double bar. We're going into a new section. What they want you to do is they want you to skip that ending and go immediately to the next line, is all. So you're going to, that second line is the. Next line, two, three. Now, if this doesn't work, if you got really big fat fingers and all, you can't get up in here too well, then we need to adjust this finger. So what we do is we start with three, five, and then two, four, and then go ahead and do the one, three, but then immediately on the three, substitute fourth finger. Just put that on. So it's one, four, so you can do two, three, then on the G sharp B if you need to. And then going on, go ahead and do 2-4 so you're in position for the... And then, top page 9, you can figure it the way it is in the book. Your thumb's doing both of these, but connect that. Now, if your hands are small enough, your fingers are small enough, just figure it the way it is in the book. That's fine. So you have that section repeated, and then on page nine you got it's repeated. Both there's two sections there on the last three lines. There's two parts. They're both repeated. You can do that, okay? There's a note on each of these the second time A V A. That's the right hand. The left hand doesn't move. So just make sure your right hand goes up to, on the repeat. Now at the bottom of page nine, there's a D C Alfini. It takes you back to the beginning. Remember D C to the beginning, and the fine is that ending that we skipped on the second line. So you just go back and play the first two lines again completely and then stop. Articulation and short staccatos, nice light wrist staccato. This part is bouncy and staccato and then you get to line three it's smooth and connected. thing and on page nine it's all smooth and connected. Dynamic wise it's to the right hand. The left hand needs to be in the background, way in the background. So soft, left hand is very soft. You have a crescendo with a nice line. You're going to go up to loud there in the second line you see where the F is. Now this introduction part when you're getting louder you have these motifs. And over and over and over, it again and again. I suggest each of these motifs you get a little bit louder. So you're not doing it necessarily by measure or anything, you're doing it by motif. Well, it works out, it's every two measures anyway. So you take your time uh, a little louder, a little louder. So each time you get the motif, you get a little louder. That works too. And then you're soft there in the third line. The left hand is very soft. And the last line on page eight. All the time I'm doing this, I want to hear this. And this is soft, so we can guess what that is. Just lift, lift the right hand up and you go up. Keep the left hand connected. Now you're soft. The left hand has to be super soft.
so forth. And then second line on page nine, you go back up to moderately loud and you're back down where it's written here. The left hand stays soft. Then when you repeat it, you go up an octave and you're, you're very soft. The left hand is really soft. You're hardly blowing on the keys here. Third line down after the repeat signs, you're back to local again and it's loud. You can bring the left hand up a little bit, but keep it in. The then when you repeat that, you're going to be soft and you go up an octave. So forth, so th basically that's the dynamics. Speed wise, it's fast. It has to be controlled and accurate, so what is your fast? And these eighth notes will be played evenly here, so it's here. Whatever you think it is. Then they've added pedal. Well, that's kind of actually works here because they add the pedal here on this part. It'll add the overtones, and that's typical. One of the uses of using pedal, one of the reasons we pedal, because if you're going to pedal, there ought to be a reason, and that is that on longer held notes, the overtones help to color the notes. So they don't just sit there and do nothing. And these, we want these, the overtones will help a great deal here. Overlapping pedal, just, you pedal just the way they're showing. I like to hear the phrasing, so I lift up with the right hand at the end of phrases or whatever so I can hear the phrasing. The left hand, you just keep legato all the way through. For the pedaling part, when I get to the last section there on page nine here, I don't like pedaling that because I don't want to smear it. I like a clean sound, so I typically don't pedal that too much. If I do, it might be just the first beat of the measure to help bring out the natural accent. repeat it and it's up higher and it's soft, there I can be kind of misty. Then I can get away with pedaling it. There, it's, it sets the mood. It changes the mood based on where I am on the keyboard and what's going on. You have to experiment with the sounds you're after on there. Uh, always learn it without pedal first so you can hear it clearly and make sure the fingers are doing everything they're supposed to do. And then when you add the pedal, you, you're aware of the difference in the sound the pedal is making. It's important. Now at the end, this is the last, uh, last two measures of the second line on page eight. You have the accent, you're very loud. And again, don't play with a stiff wrist, claps a little bit. You're just playing with a lot of weight. The left hand has an 8V8 under it, so you got to go instead of here, you're down here. So there, just be aware that both hands are moving, you got two beats to do it in, and they're going opposite directions, and that's tricky. I like to do one hand at a time if I can, so usually I'll, I'll, look, look, I'll get the left hand down, and I can play the first note in the right hand with a little finger if I have to, because it's just an octave. If I have to, so here, or I mean, here you got two beats of rest, you probably have time to get both ends and make sure you're in the right spot 
Yeah, it takes a little practice. We do practice hand moves if we have to in piano, because the beat has to be a steady, and this is a fast beat on this one. 